Hello, hello, Ashley here with another episode of the Maverick Mompreneur slash Ladypreneur podcast. I am so stoked to talk to you about personal development today. We're going to talk about a few different elements. Why personal development? How the heck do you incorporate personal development into your season of life, into your schedule, and how to make sure that the personal development you're doing is going to be in alignment with your learning style. Yes, we are talking learning styles, and that's going to be super helpful for you to think about too when it comes to your own marketing, hint, hint, and what you most need to grow to level up in your life and business, which of course, you've heard me say a million times, those translate, those go hand in hand. You level up in one, you level up in the other. It just works that way. So anyway, this is going to be good. It's long. I just recorded it. It's long, but it's juicy. It's real juicy. So get comfy and let's chat about personal growth. Hey mama, I'm Ashley, and this is the Maverick Mompreneur podcast, where you're free and encouraged to own your desire to create and scale an impactful, discoverable online brand and business in the midst of motherhood, a business that's aligned with your mission, lifestyle desires, personality, and zone of genius without wasting your time on the hustle and grind hamster wheel that is social media. Can I get an amen? Sis, you are a maverick, an original, willing to stand out in your authenticity, defy expectations, and do life and business outside the box. In our world, if it's not aligned with who we are, it's a hard pass or a brave pivot. So if you're here for the powerful identity shift and transformation from boss babe or boss mom to aligned CEO, building a one of a kind, influential, hustle-free online business that will produce long-term impact and multiple streams of income through SEO, affiliate marketing, and courses while building yourself in the process, well, pop in those AirPods, grab that cup of coffee or glass of wine, and let's get growing. Hey, hey, just wanted to give a quick reminder that Align Your Brand, the five-day group coaching program that's going to be live one time and one time only is still open for enrollment, but only until Friday, February 25th. If you're listening to this after Friday, February the 25th, you will be able to purchase Align Your Brand at actually the same price as the live program. What? But it will be self-paced. So check out the show notes. I've got a link there. We are going to be going over, oh my gosh, so much good stuff. We are going through all of the typical personal branding components, but with the lens of aligning with your highest commitments, your personal values, your personality, things that go way beyond the personal brand basics. But if you are someone who needs to dial in or rebrand your brand, we're going to be going over brand content pillars, your message and your mission, your tagline, your brand aesthetic. So things like your colors and your fonts and when to use what, your ideal client avatar, building a target audience and using your most aligned method of lead generation. We're going to go over content that serves and converts, aligned brand monetization strategy, time management, your workflow and your schedule. I mean, literally all the things. And then you get a live Q&A, which is going to be your opportunity to ask me questions about any of what you've been working on. This is the program you need if you need clarity and you need alignment in the way that you are uniquely building your brand and business. This is not a cookie cutter method, and this is your chance to really get that attention from me on your brand uh, before it's packaged into a self-paced course. So if you are interested in that, check out the show notes for the link. There is a special promotion for today only. So if you're listening to this today, so basically the next 24 hours, so it'll actually go into tomorrow as well. There is a special promotion, but you need to be in my Facebook group to access that. So make sure that you're in Elevate Academy. That's also linked in the show notes. Get in there if you're not already in there, or if you are, make sure that you check out the special promotion for the next 24 hours only if you are wanting in on a line and also get that bonus. Okay, let's get to chatting. Hello, hello, Mavericks. I'm coming to you from my closet. So I've got my beverages lined up. I have pineapple spindrift and coffee, which sounds like a terrible combination, but 
that's what we're doing this morning. It's 2-22, 2022. It's Tuesday. What a weird day, but also kind of cool. Hope you're having a good one. Although you may not be listening to this, most likely are not listening to this on 2 22 But regardless, I hope you're having a good day. We're going to talk personal development today, which I'm excited about. I have a little bit of a different angle that I want to share with you. Uh, I want to talk about why personal development, because I know whenever I started building online, I was not doing personal development. Started back in 2016, but for the first about year and a half, I was still working full time as a program coordinator for a special education department. And I didn't think I needed personal development. I didn't think I had time to fit it in my life. It just wasn't on my radar. I had heard about self-help books and things like that, but I was really like, oh, no, no, thank you. Didn't understand the concept. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've incorporated as far as personal development over the years in different seasons, because I think that's an important piece to talk about today is making sure that the personal development that you are making the time for is in alignment with what you most need to grow into your next level in life and or business. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, but those two things go hand in hand. The way you do one thing is the way you're doing the other thing. So personal development is definitely something that can translate into all areas. So why personal development, some ways to do personal development, and specifically according to your unique learning styles, which I hope will give you an understanding of what may work best for you and what may feel most aligned and motivating to incorporate into your schedule. So let's talk about why personal development. And these are just a few of the reasons that come to my mind. Firstly, when you're building a personal brand, you, in all caps, Y-O-U, are the brand. And part of showing up online in an appropriately vulnerable way, no matter what your niche is, is showing your journey. So continuing to grow along the path that you've set yourself on, that your ideal client avatar is on themselves, but a few steps behind. So thinking about continuing to grow, continuing to lead in that way by developing as a human being, whether that's in your business skill sets, whether that's in your mindset, healing, self-love, any of that can be considered personal development. But the point being, you can't inspire unless you yourself are inspired. And that can't always come from within. There's uh, there's only so much that we can pour out if we are not pouring into ourselves. And a great way to do that is through personal development and really feeding your mind and your soul. And then a byproduct of that is that you are then inspired and you can turn around and show up for your audience and inspire them. There's another reason for us ladypreneurs to invest our time in personal development And that is just by nature of the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of, a ton of friends who are entrepreneurs that are in my day-to-day life. And so sometimes it can feel a little bit lonely or like no one understands exactly what it is that you're going through, which is how it is in any job. But as an entrepreneur, when everything is on your shoulders and you're building your brand, your business, you're the CEO... There is a lot of pressure, there's ups, there's downs, and the more that we can, I don't want to say stabilize ourselves, but really nourish ourselves, pour into ourselves, feel, understand how our minds work, be able to get past fear of failure, fear of other people's opinions, etc., etc., and learning new skill sets, learning things like, I don't know, I'm looking at some of my books right now, copywriting, basically empowering yourself through education, personal development can again be business related. It can be spiritual. It can be mindset, any of the above. And it's going to depend on what you need as an entrepreneur to navigate the very unpredictable at times ups and downs of the kind of work that we've chosen to do. And the last reason I'm going to give you for why do personal development It's just frankly kind of fun to see your own growth and to look back and think, wow, I never would have had 
this perspective or this amount of self-love or this awareness or this skill set had I not taken out some time to develop and grow with intention. So it's just a fun process when you realize that you aren't born with this fixed amount of talent or skill or knowledge that you can't grow and develop. I think that's really exciting to be able to continually expand And it's exciting for your audience too, because it inspires them. So it's just fun. I feel like we're going to go ahead and end the episode there. No, no, we're not. We're just getting started. Let's talk about some things to consider when it comes to incorporating personal development as a routine practice in your life. The first is really your season of life. So what is it that you are growing through intentionally said growing through versus going through because if you are working on your personal development then whether there's ups or downs good or bad you're going to be growing through it all which is also very exciting so consider your season of life are you working full-time you have kids you're building your side hustle which i hate the word side hustle but you know what i mean do you Or maybe you're in a season where, like me, you've taken your business full time and you don't necessarily have a ton of extra time, but you could more easily see fitting in personal development, but maybe you're not quite sure what would work best for you or how to implement a routine of personal development that doesn't feel like a chore. I remember thinking that I had to do personal development. If I didn't, my business was going to fall apart and there was so much pressure, these pressury vibes around doing personal development and having a morning routine and all of these things. But there are some people who do not do extremely well waking up early. Maybe they're most creative at night and they need to have that time to sleep in and not have this expectation that they need to get up at 5 a.m. and have this hour-long morning routine when they could use that time to sleep knowing that for them and their schedule and the way that their brain works, they're most creative at night. And so there's so many different things to consider and In all things, I want you to think about yourself and what feels good, because if you have your brand and your business in alignment with what feels good to you, yes, there's going to be things that don't feel amazing, but in general, if you have things aligned to your personality, your preferences, your gifts, your skill sets, you're going to be so much more likely to want to do the work, right? It just stands to reason. I was talking in my stories the other day, a little bit of a bird walk here, but I was talking in my stories the other day about how at Orange Theory, I was thinking about the whole concept of alignment and how for me in this season of life at my age, with my preferences for working out, different injuries that I have, my social needs, and then also antisocial needs, Orange Theory has been such an aligned way to work out. And I notice that I'm so motivated to go. I want to show up. I want to do the work. I'm seeing results. It's, I love it. Whereas I have a gym in my garage, which I used to feel very aligned with, but I just, for whatever reason, and I could go into it, but it's irrelevant. I'm not able to do the work in that environment in that style of workouts right now in this season. And so for me, Orange Theory is very aligned. And so the parallel that I was thinking about is for some people, Orange Theory would not be their jam, right? They may love training for a marathon, going out and doing long runs and having a schedule and looking at the schedule and seeing what type of run is on the schedule for this morning. And they may thrive with that. Someone else may be really into, I don't know, swimming or soccer or other ways of working out they all get to the same-ish goal of increasing your fitness, or maybe it's aesthetics. I don't know what the goal is, but when someone has an aligned practice as far as how they're working out, they're going to show up, they're going to do the work, they're going to be motivated, not all the time, but it's going to feel so much more ease and flow. And the same thing goes for how we're building our brands and businesses and how we're incorporating personal development. All of these little pieces to the puzzle, the more aligned that you can get them, the more ease and flow you're going to feel as far as 
building your business and thriving as you're doing that and feeling really good. I promise you it's the same thing. If you are building your business and building your brand in a way that doesn't feel aligned and that you just don't want to do it, you're not going to put in the same amount of work and heart and effort as you would if it were aligned as much as possible. And so this is one of those pieces to it. Personal development is such a part of building your brand, building yourself because you are the brand. You are the biggest asset of your business. That's you. So it stands to reason that building yourself and developing yourself would be extremely important, right? So the more aligned you can get that practice, the better. I've sat here for a good minute trying to think of what that saying is. I'm trying to basically tell you, you can take the teacher out of the classroom, but you can't take the... Anyway, I'm going to talk to you about learning styles and just riff a little bit on some different types of personal development that would be well suited for the different learning styles. So if you're not sure what your learning style is, I hope that I can give you a little bit of a description of each of the main four types of learning styles. Now there are, there's actually more than this, but these are the four main. So you should fall predominantly into one of these areas. And so I'm going to give you some ideas for what may be an aligned way to incorporate personal development. And then after that, I want to walk you through, not just to tell you my personal development journey, but I do want to walk you through that because I've got some specific examples and frankly, kind of weird things I've done that have been effective. And it will either entertain you, inspire you, or maybe give you some ideas for what you can do to incorporate personal development as just a part of your life so that it doesn't feel like a chore and it feels like something that's fun. I'm going to go back to that word fun because if it's fun, we're going to be more likely to do it, right? Okay. First learning style. So we've got kinesthetic, auditory, visual, and reading and writing. So Hopefully you can figure out which one you are if you don't already know. So kinesthetic learners, this is someone who's hands on and they are going to thrive when they're engaging their senses during personal development. So as a kinesthetic learner, you may be gravitating towards things like maybe yoga or guided meditation where you're hearing messages, you're hearing things that are inspiring to you, that are helping you to center yourself, but you're also engaging your body at the same time. A lot of kinesthetic learners enjoy things like Bible journaling. So if you read the Bible, getting a journaling style Bible where you can almost draw on the margins, visual representation, so you're doing something while you're learning. You could even engage your senses if you're listening to a podcast or you're watching a YouTube video or you're reading a book. Just having you know a scented candle with some music that is kind of engaging your senses so that it's this experience for you that's going to be more of an anchored physical experience while you're reading. Journaling even, I mean, that's going to be a little bit more into the reading and writing, but the physical act of journaling. So if you're a kinesthetic learner, journaling, pen and paper journaling is going to be really important for you versus say taking notes in your phone or just thinking through things, having that physical element is going to be something that would be a great practice for you when it comes to personal development. So just incorporating some of those, those pieces, making sure that there's a hands-on components will really help you to thrive in that act. As a side note, before we get into auditory learners, it's really interesting because understanding learning styles is also so huge when it comes to your marketing and getting your message across effectively to all styles of learners. A lot of times, and I want you to just briefly think about this, this is a whole nother podcast episode, but a lot of times what we do is we cater to our own learning style or we cater to one specific learning style without knowing it and we miss hitting and targeting the other learning styles. And so you can do what you will with that information for now. I'll have to do a podcast on it, but it's really interesting to think about. But let's get back into auditory learners. So auditory, if you don't know, I'm sure you probably do. But auditory is, it's going to be someone who prefers listening to information that's presented to them vocally. So they like to listen to or learn best listening to a lecture or listening to a podcast. Okay, they're going to do best when it's just auditory input. And they might also, strangely enough, I was reading about this learning style a little bit more. They may also enjoy reading aloud to themselves too. It's interesting because I am definitely not an auditory learner 
when it comes to how I process information, that's actually the most difficult for me if there's no pairing with reading or writing and it's just auditory, although I have a podcast, but there's a reason why I also put the transcriptions of these podcast episodes into blog posts so that the same message is in a different style. Also, it's good for SEO, a whole nother topic, but saying that to say, you may not have a strength of a certain learning style, but that doesn't mean that you don't like listening to podcasts, that you don't like auditory information. It may just not be your best way to learn. So as an example from from the past, a long time ago now, I was telling a client the other day in college for some of my, not all of my classes, but some of the larger classes I went to UC Davis, and we would have these massive classes where the professors didn't you know, really notice if you were there or not. And so for me, there were some, sorry, mom and dad, if you're listening, but there were some classes where the professor would stand and deliver. There wasn't any visual information paired with it. And I just knew I could go home and I could read the chapters of the required reading and then do just fine on the exams because I was not getting anything out of the auditory presented information. I would try and take notes, but my brain wasn't able to keep up with that level of information, trying to do two things at once, basically, because for me, auditory is not a strength as far as my learning styles. So anyway, it's interesting now because I do love listening to podcasts, but I'm not going to retain that information or another example of something that would work well for an auditory learner would be audible books. So listening, getting the audible app, I think you get maybe three free credits a month. I can't remember. I usually use them all. I think it's three. You can listen to the books and that would be great for an auditory learner. And that is a really easy, nice way to incorporate personal development into your daily life because you can just pop it in AirPod, you can listen to a podcast or an audible book while you're doing housework or while you're cooking dinner. Like there's all kinds of opportunities where you can just listen to something. So you lucky ducks who are auditory learners and that's your preference for you incorporating personal development in a way that's going to be really effective for you is probably the easiest, if, especially if you have a busy schedule versus if you are a reading and writing type of learner, you're going to benefit from reading books, reading blogs, and you actually have to sit down and do that and make the time, right? You can't really multitask. So I'm jealous of you auditory learners. Next up, we've got visual learners. And so this one was a little bit harder to think of personal development tools that would be good for y'all, but I think I've come up with some. So visual learners, again, they're going to be better, not again, I haven't told you this, they're going to be better able to retain information or grow through personal development and have those words and concepts stick when it's presented in a graphic depiction. So things like infographics, clear pictures or charts of graphs and information, symbols, diagrams, things like that. And so for you, if you're a visual learner, you may love, I'm thinking of Instagram, carousels, infographics, things where you can see little bits of information, flow charts, Venn diagrams, things like that are going to really resonate. So if you notice in a lot of my courses and workbooks, I'll have a visual representation of the full theme or concept of the course. So if you are currently listening to this, I have the Align Your Brand program open for enrollment. If you're listening to this after February, that will be a self-paced course. And so you can see it there too. But I have a, I always try and incorporate a visual representation through a Venn diagram or some type of flow chart that shows my visual learners who are taking the program what they can expect in that way, right? And so that's just a little hint on one way that you can present visual information. But when it comes to your own personal development, if you are a visual learner, you can actually take things that you're listening to or reading and put it into some type of graphic or image for yourself to retain that. Maybe you have your journal out in front of you. 
I do this a lot. I'm not necessarily a visual learner, but I do love to put things into charts, not really graphs, but I definitely love a good chart or a good flow chart, you know, where you have sort of one central concept and then you're kind of mind mapping things off. That's really helpful. And so if you are a lot of times my clients, if they're working through trying to figure out, say, their common denominator between their brand pillars, I'll walk them through an exercise where they are literally map bubble mapping out the commonalities and circling things. And so for visual learners, you're going to want to do that for yourself with your personal development. And then lastly, there are the reading and writing learners who are people who are going to do best and succeed when it comes to learning and retaining information through things like worksheets or other written anchors for them to reference. So something in writing that they can reference. Reading and writing style of learners, they're going to be your note takers. So if you are someone who, when you take a course, say for example, or maybe right now you're jotting down notes from this podcast, that's just a regular thing you do. Now that this is, this is my learning style. So I know this one inside and out. You need that anchor of writing. You have a strength in reading. If you can see the words, you can read the words, and then you can write them down. That is going to be like your powerhouse combo. So for you, if you are a reading and writing learner, reading blogs, reading books, and then also journaling. And for you, journaling, it's not really going to matter if it's taking notes in your iPhone notes app or wherever you want to do it, but you having that written anchor, especially if you're listening to something auditory or you're listening to podcasts, synthesizing that information through taking down some notes, writing your reflections, writing your takeaways, that's going to really help you to ingrain that information. And when we're talking about personal development, that's what we want, right? We really want to think about it, noodle through it. And for you, the best way to do that is going to be through writing it down. Now, we don't always have time for that, but I'm just giving you examples of things that you may want to incorporate to be really intentional. Maybe not every day, but definitely maybe weekly, maybe whenever you get a chance to really get that quality personal development time that's going to lend itself to your learning style. As an example, I want to now walk you through how I've structured my own personal development from the start of my personal development journey to the present because I wasn't always aligned with my schedule, my learning style, all of the factors that we've talked about up to this point. And so I want to point out why that is important, why all of these factors are important. So knowing the season that you're growing through and not forcing a particular type of personal development upon yourself because that's not going to be the biggest bang for your buck. Of course, part of personal development is looking back and reflecting on what worked and what didn't work. So I'm not totally discounting the full experience, but I do want to share my experience to hopefully save you some time and make your personal development time more quality. So for example, I'm breaking this down by years. And for me, I started building online in the summer of 2016. So when I say 2016 to 2017, I'm sort of talking from summer to summer. And I was in education and I still can't quite get that out of my head because that was kind of the beginning, like the beginning and ending of a year, right? Because you wrap up a school year, you have the summer. So anyhow, I mentioned earlier in the episode as we were chatting, so I didn't do any personal development for that first year. So I had a newborn, I was exclusively nursing and then pumping slash nursing for most of that year. I worked all the time. I was thinking personal development was kind of new agey and like self-helpy. I didn't really get the concept. I had no point of reference. I didn't know anyone that was doing personal development. I had no contacts that would give me an example of that, right? So I did not do it at all. I wish I had. As soon as I started doing personal development, not as soon as I started, but my journey with personal development has literally led to making huge life changes. And that's, I think that can be scary for some people when you think about if you have a partner and you you are growing and you are becoming a different person because that is the nature of growth. You're not becoming a different person, but you're developing as a person. And so when people say, oh, you've changed. Yeah, (laughs) that's not a bad thing. We have the capacity for growth and changing and leveling up. 
And if you're doing that intentionally, it can be hard. Um, it can be hard for people around you because if they're not on that same growth track, that's fine, but it can be uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't know if you've had that experience from one end or the other, but I know I definitely have. 2017 to 2019 is the next time period. So again, this is like summer to summer approximately. I'm not going to get too into the weeds on that. But I did this morning routine very strictly. I would try almost every morning to do this particular morning routine. And I can do an episode on that maybe at some point. But I was basing it off of kind of a very regimented is a little bit like intense. But it did feel like I was doing this morning routine because it was how I thought I should be building a business, not necessarily in line with the season that I was in or what I needed, but it was very what I thought I needed to do to build a business. And I did attribute a lot of my growth in my business to this morning routine. But looking back, I don't know that it was the morning routine, getting up early and doing all these components. I do think it was being intentional about investing time in growing myself, which did in turn you know, strengthen me as an entrepreneur. It definitely did set that time aside and create that as a discipline in my life. And I did see results. Now, looking back, like I said, it's not exactly what I needed at that time, but maybe it was in some ways. Maybe I needed to see that if you discipline yourself, maybe you don't need to be as disciplined as I was with this particular morning routine that I thought I needed to do. But I think the key was that intentionality and starting the journey of personal development. It wasn't catered to exactly what I needed. I really needed more mindset work at that time, but I was very focused on learning new skill sets in business. And like I said, that is definitely something that I needed to do as I was starting out, but I also really desperately needed to fill my cup in other ways. And so in, I would say towards the end of 2019, I did stop my morning routine which was kind of weird because I at a certain point I had a lead magnet going out, uh, circulating on the internet with my morning routine. I've since turned it off because it sort of feels out of integrity because I don't do it anymore, but I did. But what I started to do was at the end of 2019, I started uh, listening to a lot of audible books in the shower. <laughs> this is kind of funny now that I'm saying, so I don't know if you do this too. Maybe a lot of people do this, but working at home was becoming more difficult at the time. I'll just leave it at that. So I was doubling down on personal development, but I was finding strange ways to do it. And so for me, audible books became a really big thing or listening to podcasts. I got this waterproof, I'll link it, maybe I'll link it in the show notes so you would like to try out this technique, you can, but a waterproof wall mount. And so I just put my phone in there. And then while I was showering, I would listen to a train, maybe it was a training for business, or maybe it was uh, more of like a mindset podcast or, you know, any type of any type of audible information. Again, that's not my best way to learn, but it was what worked for me at the time. And it was a way that I could fit in feeding my mind with things that were positive, things that were going to help me to grow, things that were going to help me to cope, all of these different things. So that was at the end, towards the end of 2019, things took a shift. I still wasn't necessarily at a point where I was able to think of personal development in the way that I do now, but I hope this goes to show you, you can shift and change how you're doing things according to the season of life that you're in and not give yourself these pressure vibes to practice personal development the way that anybody else does. What's important is that you're making that time for yourself to learn and grow and become inspired so that you can turn around and inspire. You are a leader and you need to lead yourself first, right? If you're going to turn around and lead your people. 2019 to 2021. So let's say this is the end of 2019 through 2021. In that season of my life, I was on, frankly, to be honest, I was more focused at that time on learning about mental health, healing childhood wounds. I worked with a therapist and a life coach. And I was in kind of a very different mode and it was completely transformative, the type of personal development that I was doing, but it wasn't, it wasn't focused on business as it was before. It was really, truly, even my life coach that I worked with, she is a business and life coach. And I had the biggest years of my business in 20, it was like a 
I doubled my income in 2020 and then same in 2021, not doubled it from 2020 to 2021, but continued on that same trajectory. And I really attribute it to healing things that I needed to heal within myself so that I could finally get into alignment with business and life and do what I'm meant to do. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping other female entrepreneurs to do that, to have the whole life up level where if you need that type of personal development, Development, focus on that. It translates into other areas. Me not focusing on learning copywriting or whatever else. I'm again, I'm staring at my stack of books right now. That didn't slow down my business growth. In fact, what I can attribute the major growth in my income and impact was really through working on myself. So developing myself as a human, healing, growing, becoming more authentic being my actual self. And that takes a lot of, that can take a lot of changes. It can take a lot of hard work. It's really uncomfortable. But if you hear nothing else from this episode, hear that, give yourself that opportunity to have those breakthroughs. And if you need to invest time and money in coaching, counseling, whatever you need to do to heal and break through and be your most authentic self, man, that's the whole life up level right there. So 2021 to 2022, which is where we're at now, it's interesting because now that I'm not so much in a survival mode, like personal development for, you know, mental, mental, spiritual, emotional survival, now personal development is something that I incorporate into part of my work. One of the one of the things that we talk about in the Align program is what are what are a few things, and I had a coach say this to me, what are a few things, three, two or three, that you would be doing every single day if you were assured that your business was going to bring in a certain amount of revenue? Like you didn't really have to worry about um, making ends meet or hitting your numbers or whatever it might be. What are the three things that you would be doing every single day? And one of mine, one of them is obviously hanging out with my daughter. So that's number one for me. Number two is moving my body. So working out, hopefully, or if I was feel like full on working out, walking. And then the third for me, I really realized would be reading and reflecting. And for me, as a reading and writing type of learner, it's reading something and then writing. So usually I turn them into podcasts, blog posts, social media posts, ways to basically regurgitate and give takeaways of the information that I've read and reflected on. So now it's scheduled in as a non-negotiable because I know that I need that for myself, but it's also a part of my job. And so I take that you can't inspe- you can't inspire if you aren't inspired yourself to heart and it's part of my work, which is really cool because now I look at it in a different way. It's a it's like an appointment. It's an appointment for myself but also for my audience because this is how I keep myself fresh and have, you know, new ideas or expanded ideas or, you know, best practices that are current. And so taking that time to really develop myself as a businesswoman, as a person, it all translates, is a part of my schedule now. Another thing that's new from 2021 to current, and this may resonate or it may not, but for me, it's been a huge shift in the way that I read. And you could say the same thing if you were listening to audible books or podcasts. I used to have this unwritten, unspoken, no one told me to do this rule that I needed to finish one book or podcast or audible book before moving on to another one. And I, I, what would end up happening is I would start a book. I wouldn't maybe necessarily really like it, but I would muscle through it or not. And then just take a ton of time off from doing any type of personal development. Anyway, the new rule is life is too short to finish books that are not resonating and that you don't like, and that maybe even just are not good in your opinion, right? So now what I do is I allow myself to have, I mean, right now, I think I have five different books going and they're different types of books. So some may be more business focused, some may be nonfiction, some may be fiction, some are more healing and personal development or self-development. Some are poetry. I have all different types going because those are different things that feed my soul. And so I'll read a little bit of each one in almost like a rotation, but I love it. I love it. It works for me. I don't have a pressure to 
finish one thing before moving on. It's just sort of whatever I'm needing for that day. I remember I got dumped. So my experience with uh, dating has gone very, very well, as you as you can tell. Got dumped. And I remember for that time, I was so heartbroken. And I just wanted to read Robert M. Drake books ad nauseum. But that is what my spirit and my heart needed to continue to show up, to continue to do my thing, to continue to serve my audience, to continue to be a great mama. Like I needed to feed myself in a certain way. So anyway, if you need the permission to read more than one thing at a time, or if you need the permission to, for a certain period of time, read a certain type of personal development, listen to a certain type of personal development, strictly do yoga and nothing else, then you have permission. As Mavericks, I know I don't have to tell you twice, but in all things, don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to make adjustments to get back into or more into alignment with who you are, who you're meant to be, because I promise you, you'll be your most effective in all areas the more aligned you are to that authentic true self that is you, the way that you were created, the way that you're meant to live life without these blocks, without these things and parts of life that we end up adding into our worlds that were never meant to be there in the first place. And the more you can get in alignment with who you are and what you're meant to do, the more fun life is and the more flowy and easy. Not easy. Life's never easy, but the more ease that's in your life. So that's what I want for you. I hope that today's episode can help you incorporate personal development into your life in a way that's going to be effective for you and the unique way that you learn. And then also in a way that honors the season that you're in, the schedule that you're in. And remember, you don't have to do anything any certain way. It is up to you to maverick the heck out of your life and your business and the way that you're building both of those things. Thank you as always. I love you guys. You're amazing. Thank you for all the shares. That is literally life-giving. Um, just on a personal note, I love seeing you share and tag me, but it's also one of the best things you can do to help support the podcast. So if you're loving this content, I would really appreciate you sharing with your teams or your audiences. Tag me. I'd love to give you a shout out. And then I also, of course, weekly send out little Starbucks cards to someone who has shared. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.